Hey friends, welcome to this week's episode of Not Your Mama's Podcast. The title of this episode is The Internal Family Systems Therapy Model. And I'm really excited. We have Katie LaSalle on and she is a lifelong seeker and recovering corporate executive who loves helping women thrive in business. And we are so excited to have her on. Katie, can you give the audience a little bit about your background and kind of what was the catalyst that led you to do the work that you're doing now? Yeah. So I worked in the corporate world for about 12 years. I did um, financial consulting and I, you know, I never stopped. I just, not only with regard to my full-time job, but I always had something going on on the side. I was personal training. I was teaching yoga. I was coaching circus, which I still do. (laughs) Um, You know, I was getting a master's um, and I burned out really hard. Um, so, you know, I kind of blew past all of the mental symptoms of burnout and went right into the physical, um, and my body said, no, you need to stop. Um, we're, (laughs) we're done with this. You can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. So that kind of necessitated, you know, I had to find a new way to be. Um, and I, that's when I discovered IFS and, um, IFS has a great somatic component to it. So there's a lot of, really good information about how what's going on in your mind might be affecting what's going on in your body, how that's linked. Um, and it, it really changed my life um, and just my connection between my mind and my body. And that was something that I, I really wanted to bring to more people, um, as well as just really needing a shift in how I was doing things personally for me. So can you break down Um, you know, it's about connecting like mind and body, but what exactly is internal, internal family systems, you know, the IFS therapy model, like, can you expand a little bit more for all those people that it's just like new to their ears? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so IFS teaches that we all have, um, parts and that's based on kind of language that we naturally use. Um, so, you know, when you're trying to make a decision, you might say, Ooh, part of me really feels this way. And a part of me really wants to do this. And, um, IFS just kind of takes that and says, yeah, you actually do have different parts and they, they hold different thoughts, different feelings, and they, will encourage or inspire different behaviors. Mm -hmm. So IFS is a framework. It's a model for kind of getting to know what are these parts that are inside of you? And, um, you know, what are they advocating for? And the awareness of is a part, one particular part that's really strong, kind of like driving the bus. um, Mm -hmm. And is that really what I want? Does that really make sense for me? Um, Because a lot of times throughout our lives, these parts can really get kind of stuck um, in one way of doing things. And, you know, that's how it kind of relates back to mindset blocks, for example. You know, there might be a part of you that says it's really not safe to, you know, put myself out there and be really like bigger about what I believe in. And that might have been true 15 years ago, um, but maybe it's not true anymore. So it's, it's a really incredible way to... Um, get to know yourself on, on a subconscious level and, um, you know, meet parts where they're at and kind of over time develop that trust to help them maybe let go of some of those things that they're carrying that don't work for you anymore. Yeah, no, it's important because our mindset really can make or break, you know, us moving forward and, and growing and going after our goal. So it's nice to have tools like the IFS to help break those patterns and, and old ways of thinking and really getting in tune and connecting with yourself. So what are some common parts that you see in women and how does that affect how we show up in the world? Yeah. One of the biggest ones I see, and um, I've got a strong one myself, is uh, perfectionist parts. Mm -hmm. So these parts of us that, you know, have these jobs that are, we are, you know, we're not going to make mistakes. We're going to do everything perfectly. And that a lot of times comes from this driver of, well, it's not safe to make mistakes. You know, it's not safe to be human. I I have to do everything right or, you know, I'm going to get in trouble or people are going to think I'm incompetent or, you know, all of these these kind of fears that are like driving that behavior. Yeah, like outside um, pressure. Yeah, yeah. And outside pressure that turns internal as well, right? Like we take it in 
Um, and then, you know, you have kind of within your system, it, it, that's that perfectionist that then becomes that external pressure inside you. Um, and that is one of the key recipes for burnout, right? Because we are all human <laughs> as much as those of us with strong perfectionist parts maybe don't want to hear that, right? Everyone's going to make a mistake. Um, and if you are sitting there and not allowing any space for that over time, uh, that's, it's, it's a recipe for burnout. So how would, you know, your clients use the IFS to help them shift these like mindsets and blocks to change their life? Like the perfectionism example that you gave. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's really hard to shift a block without understanding what the block is and why it's there. Okay. And we have different ways that we kind of like change habits, right? Like um, traditional kind of cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, is all about like kind of like finding behaviors and changing behaviors. And it's less about, um, you know, IFS is, is not just about finding the root cause, but also like really trying to understand it and really trying to offer like compassion for it and realize it's there for a reason. Mm -hmm. So all all behaviors make sense in the context that they were developed. So at one point, whatever is in your system was there for a really good reason. And, you know, it did get you to where you are today. So understanding why and kind of offering that compassion to that part is offering compassion to yourself and offering that understanding to yourself. And um, true long-term shifts really come through that. Any person or part that feels like they're kind of being forced to change, that's not really, uh, in my opinion, for most people, that doesn't work for long-term change. Um, so it's he really hearing from, okay, this perfectionist part is deeply, deeply afraid of mistakes. Okay, well, why? And, you know, not why with judgment, but why with curiosity? Like, what, what do they think is going to happen if they stop doing this job of making you perfect? Mm -hmm. And does that maybe make sense to you on a really deep level? Like, you know, um, early on in your life, did somebody really instill that message in you that if you made a mistake, you know, someone wasn't going to love you anymore, right? Like there's all sorts of reasons why um, IFS calls them burdens. These parts, like they pick up these burdens and they say, you know, I have to keep doing this. So understanding, compassion, and, and teamwork, like working with the part, okay, what would feel okay to you to shift just a little bit yeah. um, rather than this like forcing and this kind of oppressive, like, no, we're not doing that anymore. So give an example of like, let's say someone, they got their curiosity, they've identified, you know, like the root cause and like the fear of whatever it is that they're trying to unblock and release that doesn't serve them anymore. Like what exactly like would they be doing? Would they like meditate on it? Would they journal it? Like what is the exact method that IFS would help them actually release the yeah. unwanted thoughts? Yeah. So it depends on whether you're doing work with a practitioner, so with either like a coach or a therapist, or whether you're doing it um, by yourself, because you actually can do the work both ways. One of the great things about IFS is it's not um, it's not gatekeeping. Okay. So there is a lot of information out there about kind of how to work within your own system. Um, and when you're working by yourself or with somebody else, it's how, how do you look in? How do you kind of ground yourself? So you might use meditation as a tool to get to a point where everything in your head's a little bit quieter and you by yourself or with a practitioner would find kind of like, what's my trailhead? And a trailhead just means there's something here, right? There's a path that I want to go down. Um, you know, and maybe that's, I just had a review at work and I got, you know, 90% stellar feedback, but 10% was, here's your growing edges. And I had a really strong reaction to that because yeah. that perfectionist part said, I messed up. I made a mistake. You know, I, I, I'm not safe, right? Like this is, <laughs> this is bad. Like, yeah. Yeah. You <laughs> just focus on all the negative and not I, like the great positive yeah. things they had to say you're just like there was nothing positive <laughs> right yeah and and I think that happens to so many of us and 
you know, it, it, it makes a lot of sense. And that would be a great kind of way in to, to get to know that part of yourself. And whether it's like you're kind of speaking internally to it or a practitioner is speaking directly to it, you're, you're getting curious. You're getting, you're getting to know it. So once you find it, you're kind of asking questions like, huh, what do you do for, for me? And how long have you done that? And um, who gave you this job? You know, mm-hmm. and and you and you and you learn more and you get curious. And again, like people, parts respond to that curiosity and that compassion if it's coming from this kind of open hearted place um, of really like, I'm not tr- I'm not going to try to force you to change. I want to understand you. Yeah. I think that's really key is understanding and yeah. really taking the time to go internal because like we live in such a fast paced world these days that we don't take the time to really listen to ourselves and like what our internal dialogue, like, well, we hear our internal dialogue, but we're not like curious with it and dissecting it and really understanding like the core value it holds inside of us. So I think it's important to um, what you had just said about that. Yeah, no, you're, you're so right. And um, you know, it, it's always going to depend on your system and kind of like level, like trauma makes a big difference on how willing a protector might be to kind of shift, right? And and how how long the protectors had that job, right? If it picked it up when you were two years old, you know, that might be more entrenched than something that kind of happened in college or, or it might not be, right? So this isn't necessarily going to be a quick thing. Sometimes it is. Um, but generally like the more that you start to deepen that relationship within, and that's the internal family systems, right? Mm -hmm. The more that you're kind of developing that relationship with your parts, um, the more trust that you're building within yourself, right? And Mm -hmm. one of the things that I love about the model is everyone always says, oh, self-compassion is so important. Self-trust is so important. It's like, great. Okay. But how do you develop those? Yeah, right? How do I what? get that? Yeah. How do I What's get the there? Secret sauce to it, <laughs> right? Yeah. And and the model to me, like it really, it really offers that. It's 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 um that process of you know finding a part and and kind of staying with it and getting to know it um and befriending it, like creating that connection and um over time then it'll kind of let you know, like, what would I need in order to feel safe not doing things this way anymore? And, you know, what am I afraid is going to happen if I stop doing it? Like, how do we alleviate that concern in a different way other than me continuing to do the same thing over and over and over that, quite frankly, most protectors are very tired. Yeah, yeah, exactly. (laughs) Um, They don't want to do it anymore. Exactly. So, if listeners only remember one thing from today, what do you mm-hmm. hope that is? Oh, that everyone has an internal wise leader. In IFS, we call it the self. Um, mm-hmm. And that's not a part. It's it's kind of what's left when you unblend with all of those parts. And um, everyone has that. You, you have what you need to heal already. You have the knowledge. It's in there. Um, and, you know, other people, they don't, they don't actually know what you need. You know what you need. Um, mm-hmm. Anybody that you work with, in my opinion, you want to find somebody who is interested in kind of helping you uncover that, not imposing their ideas onto you, right? Mm-hmm. Um, because they don't live as you. They don't live in your body and in your mind. And um, you have the ability to unlock that, right? Like, mm-hmm. and I, I just... Um, I hope that people can can feel empowered by that, even if they're not quite sure yet where to start. Yeah, no, I think that's a great, a great thing to remember for today's episode. Um, so I have four questions I ask all my guests, and I cannot wait to know what your answers are. <laughs> and my first one is who and what inspires you, Katie? Hmm. Oh, I think it has to, I think it has to be my clients. I mean, I just I see the amount of bravery, just courage that I see in people who are willing to kind of go there and and to dive deep um, into places that are 
often quite uncomfortable and hard and, um, you know, maybe filled with grief or rage. Uh, Mm -hmm. I think that that's what I would say to that. Yeah, no, it's, I think it would be so fulfilling to see people from where they started to where they end up and like the growth and like, just see like, just even like their body language change and the way they talk about themselves and to other people. And, you know, I'm pretty sure it's very inspiring to see that. My second question to you is what is something you wished you knew when you were younger? (laughs) Oh gosh. Um, that it gets better <laughs> honestly um you know a lot shall of, pass. yeah a lot of people who end up in this field that we don't we don't frequently we don't have the best childhoods um so just I think I'd just reach back to my younger self and just say you're doing it you're gonna get there no oh, that's sweet yeah give her a hug yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the essential part of your daily routine Mm, taking a moment or more than one moment to get present and to check in with what's going on in my body, um, you know, what hurts, what's tingly, what has butterflies, what is tight, um, what's going on in my brain, you know, how's my energy, how's my affect, and what can I do to just like make, even if it's just a little thing, like what can I do to just make that just a little bit better wherever mm-hmm. it's up? Yeah, that's good. Take time, check in with yourself, tune in. That's yeah. really good. It makes the biggest difference in the world instead of just like rushing to the next thing and, and neglecting yourself. So yeah. Like um, and my last question is the best advice you've ever received. <laughs> oh, so when I was kind of, thinking about starting my company, which I've been thinking about, I would say forever, right? I had all those little side gigs because of course, a part of me always wanted to like leave my corporate career and go do something that was more in wellness and more with a direct impact of kind of helping people. Um, I had a leadership coach and I was talking to him and I said something along the lines of, well, yeah, you know, when I'm 40, I want to, I want to semi-retire, you know, I I'll still work, but I want to work and do what I love, like, instead of working for money. And he said, okay, so what's going to be different when you're 40? Mm. And I, that's not direct advice, but it was the right question at the right time Mm -hmm. because the answer was, I didn't have an answer. It was just, I was afraid. So I had set this arbitrary target, right? Of like, I'll be ready then. Yeah. Um, but you know, what does ready mean? And I, I, I guess the, the advice that I took away from that is kind of always thinking about what's keeping you from doing it today. Yeah. What? Well, yeah. Only your, yourself is the only person holding you back from doing it today. Right. You know, yeah. you're the only one stopping yourself. <laughs> yeah. And and maybe you legitimately aren't ready, right? Like, yeah. let's say that I had had an answer and my answer was I need to have X amount of money saved up or I need a solid plan for how I'm going to have health insurance. You know, that that would have been a very different answer. But, um, uh, you know, not having an answer is an answer in and of itself. <laughs> yeah, totally. Well, Katie, thank you so much for coming on this week's episode of Not Your Mama's Podcast. It was such an honor to have you on. And thank you so much for sharing your passion about the internal family systems model. And if anyone is curious about it, all of Katie's links are down below in the show notes. Don't be shy. Go say hi. And thank you everyone for listening to this week's episode of Not Your Mama's Podcast. And I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks, guys. (music) 